What is going on everybody, your old pal Jimmo back again with another exciting video where uh, it's one of my favorite kinds actually, where the ones that I'm not actually the one spraying. So I'm just filming this job, it's my younger brother spraying this red Toyota, I believe it's a Toyota, um, I don't know, it was a few months ago, my memory's a little sketchy on it, but there's lots to pick apart, so we're going to have fun doing that. And starting with the prep work, we're going to look at these finger marks in the blend panels and the multicolored primer. So we've got a lot of gray and white and light gray and medium gray, different shades of primer going on. So ideally you want to have one, one uh, shade of undercoat, valued undercoat. Ideally the proper value that would complement this color best and help with coverage. Um, it's not going to be a huge issue today. We're using Onyx Production Solvent and the solid colors you'll see in a minute, they cover extremely quick. So uh, still, it is best to have a proper undercoat. So I'm um, just throwing it out there. So you see the finger marks in the blend panels. That could be avoided if you used a, a sander, a DA, and maybe a nylon paste or a nylon pad with a sanding paste would give you a more uniform surface to blend across. So the risk you run there, of course, is having your metallics catching those finger marks and becoming visible. Now he hasn't been spraying for a very long time, um, so there's, I'm sure, a lot to look at on his spray technique. And for starters, you'll see a lot of the time he's doing a dead stop as he comes, well, as he comes to the edge of his spray. Sometimes he rolls his wrist a little, and that's the way you want to do it. You want to make sure that you're moving your paint out and not having a big hard edge when you stop. Because if you stop at the edge and come back immediately, you're going to start to pile up material on that edge. So. Uh, I mean, I personally like to walk the entire length of a car, a small, a small job like this, and especially. But um, yeah, that's the way he's doing. That's there's nothing wrong with that. But you want to just be a little bit more careful. Uh, you can see the lines. The line he's following is a little bit crooked, but uh, that's okay. Uh, the paint's pretty forgiving. But as the years go on, I'm sure it'll look a little bit more robotic. So he's also trying out my SATA 5000 here, which is a pretty wicked gun. Um, handles the base coat amazing so this is uh, the HVLP version so there's the HVLP and the RP the RP is the clear gun and I mean both are fantastic guns I've sprayed quite a bit more with both of them since the last time I talked about them and uh, yeah they're just uh, the base coat gun I absolutely love I still prefer the Iwata WS 400 for clear but I don't think anybody's gonna complain if they're spraying a SATA RP for clear so um, you know you can't go wrong either way the Techna gun is what he uses for clear at the end here. I did offer up the RP, but you know sometimes with painters, I think especially starting out, I remember being this way a little bit when you kind of break in. Some you're used to using your own guns, and you feel like it, once you step outside of that, everything is just going to collapse. Uh, you're going to have runs across the entire panel, which could be true. I think uh, that's probably happened to me before, but uh, I think moving, you know, after having quite a few more years spraying uh, I find that you know just hand me whatever guns closest and I'll make it work but uh, I mean I I'd prefer the Iwata for clear but I mean if I have to walk 20 steps to get it and I got the SATA right in front of me then I mean that's a no-brainer and if memory serves me correctly this is his first tri-coat there's two painters at the shop here and usually the other painter would get all the tri-coats and since he's starting out he would get the easier jobs but um, yeah, so I think he was a little nervous on this one here, but you know we got through it. Everything looked great. Now, right now, I believe this is our second coat of solid going down. I've been talking and talking and talking. I haven't been paying attention to what he's actually doing, but um, I believe there's two and a half coats. You know what? I remember how the video came together. If we see, if we haven't seen him sand out a piece of dirt, or you'll see like a little spot. That's another thing about the solvent paint. It's really, it's really easy to repair compared to the waterborne. You can wet sand it, which is something you cannot do with water. So, I always liked that. I always found that the best way to repair base coat without wrecking it and scratching it all too coarsely, and it would just sand a lot easier wet than dry. But of course, with waterborne, if you put water on it, it would just dissolve in the water and make a big mess. So this is the mid coat going down. Now the first coat of mid, so we did repair that spot, just kind of spotted it back in with a little bit of base coat. And since it's an activated base coat, I find that it's it's pretty friendly as far as recoating. So you know, back with other solvents, um, the higher VOC solvents in the past, if you didn't use a hardener, 
typically you'd have to be careful not to relift all those edges and show a big ring when you re when you spotted it back in so there's our blend uh, zone for the the pearls where i was saying i'm a little concerned because i don't like those finger marks this paint's pretty friendly for that and pretty forgiving but still it's a good habit it's just to make sure you have a nice uniform blending surface and um you know he's looking at it right now and he's probably thinking the exact same thing and I apologize for the low quality footage today, cell phone shot. I try to have a good camera with me when I'm doing this stuff now, but uh, you know, sometimes when you're on the fly making these decisions, stopping in, and you know, you have to you have to use the equipment that you got in your pocket. So uh, that's what we're working with today. So now this is the second coat of mid, and I made sure, well, maybe second or third, I couldn't really tell you for sure, but um, the main thing is uh, he's walking the entire length of the car, and that's a little bit better of an idea when you're doing the mid coats especially because that's going to give you that uniform color all the way across if you you know if you since every coat of mid is going to change the color a bit if you have an uneven amount say in the door where you might be stopping you're going to have a different color there so most people probably wouldn't see it um it'd be undetectable but still you just want to you want to make everything as nice and uniform as you possibly can and uh we don't want to get too close to that edge there or else it's going to throw off the color to the deck lid. So, a few things to watch out for. So this is actually his final coat. I couldn't remember if he did in fact coat here or not, but um, that looks like that's what's happening here. The gun's a little bit further back. He could go a bit further than that even, but the idea is just to open up the fan, even things out, and uh, you know make everything look all nice and uniform. So here is what it looks like all uh, all flashed off, and or flashing off maybe, I, I don't really recall at this point, but we usually give it about five minutes in between each coat, and maybe an extra five to ten minutes at the end before applying the clear coat. Now I can't remember for the life of me what clear is going on here. Um, I believe it's Glazridge 923-220, but I do not know for sure. Um, you can see we got the sun gun in there, get some buckets and stuff. Uh, should try and clear out all the clutter and make everything, you know, keep your booth as clean as possible. Rag on the floor. What else can we criticize? Oh, we got, looks like a piece of tape swinging in the breeze. Um, I know I leave, I leave a lot to pick apart too. So it's nice, it's refreshing when I get to do it to somebody else. Um, and that hose, I think it's time to replace that hose. You get a lot of dirt coming off of your hose onto your paint job. Not to mention if you run it over constantly, it's gonna break apart and fly through and contaminate your paint job, which is a good reason to use line filters. Anyway, um, let's get back to this clear job here. So again, I like to walk the entire length of the job on something like this, and I don't think he's rolling his wrist there as well as he should be. Um, it looks like more of a dead stop halfway through the door and, and you're gonna get a material build up there. So that's something to be careful of. I've went through so many of those Develbus regulator gauges too. The one on the bottom of the gun. I don't know why I don't like those gauges, but I do like this gun. It's still it's a great gun. And you go through a lot of baffles too on them, I find. I don't I've talked to some people that say, you know, they've been using it for years and years and years and never experienced any problems with the baffles and then I have other people as soon as I say the word Techna gun, they say I hate replacing the baffles every month, so just throwing it out there. And you know, baffle's kind of a fun word to say though, so maybe that's part of Develbus's master plan. Get people saying baffle, and people will just keep buying their guns. Or maybe I'm overcomplicating things. Okay, let's get back to this job. So, uh, yeah, we got the clear going down here, nice and shiny. See, I don't think it would take too much more just to walk that entire length. I mean, what is that, like three steps, and you pretty well cover this entire car. But, uh, anyway so hopefully after my brother here Tyler sees how much I've picked apart his job and everybody on YouTube's done the same he's gonna say man I should make more videos for these guys they seem to really enjoy what I'm doing so I expect that's what's gonna happen and we're gonna see all kinds of videos coming you know he's gonna be doing this on his own and and um, you know helping us out see we'll get to see some cool work just so he has that chance that the entire internet can say, Hey, why'd you mask off that bumper, you jerk? 
So this here is the second code going on, and um, I don't have, I just checked like every folder in cell phone that I have to see if there's any sort of assembled shots on this job, and I don't really have anything, so um, you're going to have to use your imagination again on this one here. Uh, as far as I recall, everything went well, but I'm pretty sure as soon as this was sprayed, I said, okay, I got to go, and um, that was it, so... I, I didn't really put a lot of planning into this production, but um, I'll make it up to you at some point in time. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, and maybe I'll just cop out with one of those corny behind-the-scenes videos to fill some time. But one thing's for sure, there will be some more awesome videos coming out at some point in time. So it looks like I'm running out of video, so I better start wrapping things up. Now the job, uh, as far as I recall, came out pretty good. The only thing was it was a little on the dirty side, so after it dried, it would have needed to be sanded down and polished to remove some of that dirt. Uh, particularly in the top, um, that sail panel and that fender, I believe, were a little bit dirtier than the rest. But, um, you know, there's a lot of factors. The boot doesn't look like it's being kept uh, as good you know as nice as it should be and that's one big thing that I'm sure he'll learn as you go so these little things all add up to cut down on the dirt uh, everything from how you keep your gun gun maintenance to your airlines to uh, well sweeping your floors the way the cars masked everything comes into play so many little things that contribute to getting a nice clean job that you wanna make sure you consider so um, so I will cut him a little bit of slack just because of the booth, the way it operates. And I mean, I have sprayed in that booth before. The problem with it is it always runs at negative pressure and there's no adjustments to be made on the cabin pressure. So it's always gonna be sucking in anything from outside every time you open the door. If there's somebody standing right outside your booth, which happens constantly, or somebody blows off a car in the body shop and in the direction of your paint booth, as soon as you open the door, that's gonna come in. Uh, any maybe uh, seals that might not be sealing properly on the doors is going to suck in that dirt as well. So I'll cut him a little bit of slack, but all of these things kind of add up to, um, you know, produce a nice clean job. Uh, so yeah, let's wrap things up. I'm going to keep trying to pump some more videos out for you and keep these things flowing. I know they've been slow, and I know I say that every video, and maybe one of these days I'm going to figure something out to get them coming along a little quicker hopefully uh, Tyler here pitches in and maybe um, you know, does some stuff for us so anyway thanks for watching leave us a comment and uh, don't forget to subscribe for more